The World Enduro Super Series can be boiled down to one simple purpose. To find the most complete rider on the planet. The one who can join the dots between Carl's dinner and full gas. Whilst there's room to improve his extreme results, there's little doubt Josep Garcia is the fastest man in the paddock. As the first non-French rider ever to win at Le Treffe, he's the benchmark for speed in the series. But a week before Hawkstone Park, a race favouring his lightning pace, Josep faced a huge setback. Before Houston, I, I took a, an injury in my finger. I was training and I was passing the rocks and I get stuck like this and I go in front and my finger just go back and I feel like, Fah. I twist. And when I take the clutch, I feel like this bone go out. I had the ligament broken. I go to Houston 10 days after surgery. I, it was a really difficult weekend for me because uh, I cannot prepare the race like I want and it was frustrating because last year I was there uh, winning the, the both days. So it was uh, difficult because I expect more from that race, but the situation is that. With his hand improving, Josep returns to his native Catalonia for a brand new race in the series, BR2 Enduro Salsona. Combining elements of classic, extreme and motocross over 15 tests, BR2 challenges every aspect of a rider's performance. In 2014, I did my first World Enduro race here, so it was uh, special for this, but it's more special because I'm close to my house. It's like my home race. Uh, my family will be here, my friends, uh, my girlfriend live here. So for sure, if you win at home, it's uh, more special because you have all your crowd, the family, friends and everyone you think, well, they are here, so I have to do a good race. So it's not a pressure, it's like an extra motivation. Whilst Josep enjoys the perks of a local race, one rider having to make do without the comforts of home in Salsona is British privateer Sam Winterburn. This is the Hotel of Solsona. Me and my girlfriend are sleeping here. I am um, on the bed right next to the bike. I've never ever actually slept as close as this to my bike in my whole life. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird, really. <laughs> the difference between a privateer rider and a factory rider is I have to do everything myself. I've had to drive 20 hours. Them boys just fly, they get a hotel, find everything out myself where them boys are just chilling in bed and <laughs> probably walking the track, I don't know, but yeah, it's a lot harder being a privateer than, than being a factory rider. At most races, Sam is supported by his team, Triple D Motorsport. This weekend, though, Sam's assistance comes courtesy of his girlfriend, trials and extreme rider, Chloe Richardson. I try and get to most rounds of the West. Um, I think I've only missed Lagares this year. I mainly do all of like the booking and entering and he's not very good with computers so I have to do all that kind of side of things and then I do a little bit of bike maintenance I can do if he needs me to. I definitely couldn't do it on my own. Um, you 100% need somebody with you. If anything goes wrong, if you injure yourself, you definitely need somebody to, to help. At the Erzberg Rodeo 2018, that support became vital. During the prologue, Sam lost control, suffering a catastrophic crash. I can remember setting off. I got everything perfect, wasn't pushing it too hard. Going along this straight and just, boom, it just went. I was waiting in the bottom for him to come back to the van and someone heard on the radio that his number had been airlifted to hospital and so they told me straight away and when I went back to the van, his bike was parked there with the helmet that he'd crashed with. I ended up breaking my shoulder blade, I crushed two vertebrae, I split all my arm, all up there. 
I had a um, serious concussion and they say it takes maybe a couple of years to get over concussion, so. I think mentally it was a struggle because going from being able to ride and work every day and then not be able to do anything, he was like, mentally he struggled with it. To be honest with you, I did one race when I first got back on and I just, I pulled off because it was so, it just felt like it was gonna happen again, do you know? It just felt like it was gonna tuck under and throw me off, so I had a bit more time off after that and got my head straight. It was more mentally than, than anything. It was just, it was pretty scary actually getting back on it. Every sport has a spiritual home. If England has cricket, Canada has ice hockey, and the USA has baseball, Spain has motorbikes. Here in Spain, the enduro is a good sport. Uh, many people uh, love the, this sport. It's a really nice place for, for, for racing and for training. People in Spain uh, love bikes. I think uh, we have the, the fuel in the blood. And uh, I think uh, in Spain we have uh, good, good riders also. In the West now uh, we are four riders in top 10. There are many riders they are really fast also uh, from uh, World Championship, uh, Spanish Championship. So I think it will be, uh, the level will be high here. So it will be difficult, uh, but uh, we are ready and uh, we, we will try to, to battle for the top uh, positions. A privateer's life is a contradiction. For many, the obvious goal is to sign to a factory team. Yet without factory support, they often lack the best bikes or financial freedom to train full time. Consequently, results suffer and they fail to attract the very teams they dream of joining. On top of this, high costs mean very few privateers make it to every West round. Sam is a rare exception. Consistency is very important. I've been to every round this season. I've gradually been moving up the ranks and yeah, it's just so important to be in there, to show your face and to do well, really. At the moment, doing it off his own back, it's hard, especially when he has to work to pay for the trips like this. Ideally, if he could ride every day or ride as many days as possible and work as little as he could, that is the goal. At the moment, there's so many factory riders that are still at the top, still at the top of the game. And to be honest, there is a lot of privateers from every country that are nearly at the, the point of being factory, but I think getting there is the hard part. Josep Garcia, Amador Vici. Yeah, day one in VR2 is uh, done. A uh, good day for me, I uh, felt really good with the bike, but still I did some mistakes. I had two crashes in the tests. Yeah, in the extreme test, in the first one, I, I jumped into the one lock section and I jump again and my front wheel took something, I don't know exactly, and I lose the front wheel. Yeah, try to tomorrow stay all day on the bike and, uh, and don't make mistakes. Second cross test, um, the, the deep ruts, the, they're just crazy with all the riders going through and um, hit a soft spot and it eyesighted me massive and yeah, went down big. To be honest, it's like a it's like a Romaniac state. It's just it's flat out and there's just no rest at all. And as soon as you come into a, a check, you're, um, you're filling up with petrol and then you're going again. And it's just quite oh, just so tight. Like all racing, enduro relies on the principle of forward motion, both literally and figuratively. Putting his injury and the disappointment of Hawkstone behind him, Josep was the dominant force at BR2 all weekend. I feel incredible to, to win at home with all, all my, my, my people, my family, my girlfriend, my friends and everyone. So yeah, it's uh, really nice also to take the second win of the, of the season and yeah, win at home is uh, incredible. Sam manages 22nd place at Salzona, 
enough to keep him inside the top 15 riders in the overall rankings, despite a tough weekend on the bike. I didn't particularly like any of the tests today, except the last one, <laughs> the Mocross test. I think I crashed in every test out there and lost a lot of time, but yeah, it is what it is. The word is definitely challenging. We've had some sleepless nights and um, hectic days riding, but um, at the end, the result counts, and yeah, it's all been good. Next time on West Diaries, Manny Letton Bickler and David Cyprian head to Getson Rodeo for the final chapter of the 2019 World Enduro Super Series.